Today's date is Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. My name is Adam Daniel. I'm an eighth grade student at Bicultural Hebrew Academy in Stamford, Connecticut. I will be interviewing my grandmother, whose name is Noreen Krasnagor. This interview is being recorded for the Oral History Archives of the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County. So I'm known now as Richard S. Cohen, or Richard Selman Co Cohen. Okay, do you have a nickname? I'm sorry? Do you have a nickname? Do I have a nickname? Papa. Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you named after? Yes, there's a tradition uh, in, in, uh, in Iraq uh, uh, to name anybody whose name is David. When he has a son, they call him Sal Salman, for Solomon. And the reverse is true as well. So if you have, your name is Salman, you have a son, you call him uh, David. So my name really was a biblical in, in the origin because of King David and King Solomon. Can you start by telling me your full name? My full name in English, Hebrew or Yiddish? All three is good. Well, if I know them. My English is Lawrence Rezac. That's my name. And Eliezer Rezac in Hebrew. And Leza Mendel in Yiddish. Um, when and where were you born? I was born in 1944, November 23rd, Thanksgiving, in Brooklyn, New York. I was born in New York City, USA. Born in South Africa in 1935. I was born in Morocco, North Africa, mm -hmm. in a city, well, it's a peninsula called Mugador. Mm -hmm. Now it is called the Sawira. I was born in 1946 in Hanover, Germany, in, right after the war, World War II. Like, do you know, like, where your family originated from? Uh, my family all together, they're all yeah. from different places. Okay, uh, you want to say some of them? Okay, my grandpa, as I, uh, my dad, as I remember, was born in Moscow, and my mom was born in Belize, Georgia. Okay. And they met on this resort by the sea in Georgia, named Bagra. Do you know where your family was from originally? Well, my parents, I know, uh, they were yeah. from Morocco. My parents, my mother was born in a city called Casablanca. My mm -hmm. father was born in Mogador. Do you know anything about your ancestors' immigration to the United States? Uh, they got very little. On, on my mother's side, my maternal grandparents, um, what, I've, what I've heard is that around 1918 or so, 1916, my great-grandparents decided to send their children to the United States because the Ottoman Empire was crumbling at the time. So they were living in poverty. Uh, the um, conscription was a big threat to them. So they decided to move to America. Do you know anything about your ancestors' immigration to Israel? Uh, to Israel, my father immigrated as a young man at 17 with Betar Youth Movement. My mother immigrated to Israel in 1948 with her mother. And then we made Aliyah to Israel in 1957. We arrived to what was called the Mabara in Kfar Atta near Haifa. And after 10 months, we moved to a kibbutz, kibbutz uh, and the uh, northern border. Interesting. Uh, Kfar Giladi it was called. And in 1960, we lived the kibbutz. We lived uh, in a, a, like a kibbutz galuyot. You know what is it? It's immigrants. Yeah. 
immigrants see. came from uh, several countries. The socialist group. It uh, countries like Poland, uh, Russia, the Soviet um, Union. It's, um, by the way, it's Ru Russia, not Russia, just so you know, Ru Russia. Yeah. And uh, Hungary and uh, many others. We have uh, a nice childhood. Uh, all many friends. We get together. We play. My mother left Vienna in 1938, and she left because by that time the Nazis had taken over Austria, and her parents and family wanted her to escape and to have a safer life in South Africa. Can you describe in more detail your childhood home, neighbors, friends, and family? Let's see. I lived in a triple-decker house. My grandparents lived on the top floor, my mother's parents, and we lived on the first floor. Mm -hmm. In the third floor, my brother and I used to play and hide. Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your life growing up. Can you describe details about your your childhood home, neighbors, friends, and family? I grew up on a farm, and we always had a lot of people there, a lot of cousins, and we were like, and I was raised with uh, my father and his sister raised their children together, and. Uh, there were, we had, my father had three girls, and my, his sister had a, a boy and a girl, so we brought up like one big family. So, what was it like? You mean back in the camp? Yeah. Well, I can't lie, I was a very, very happy child here. I had an amazing... Uh, like friends and we would run all all the time in our inner um, backyard. Huh? backyard backyard yeah. whatever you call it it wasn't ours it was like every the everyone street. who lived the courtyard. Huh? courtyard courtyard exactly we would play all kind of games and I was a happy child Ima to describe the childhood home אבא, אתה יכול לתאר את הילדות שלך בטהרן ממש בקצרה? הילדות שלי הייתה ילדות מאוד מאושרת בטהרן. חוץ מהוונדליזם של האישים ברחובות, אנחנו, כשהיינו נוסעים לבית הספר וחוזרים, אז לפעמים היינו נפגשים בכל מיני מפגינים שיעים, שהיה קצת מפחיד, אבל מעבר לזה, הטהרן היא עיר מאוד יפה, ויש הרבה מים ונהרות. וגם... תן לי לתרגם. בבקשה. רוברטו. כן. הוא אמר שהילדות שלו היו מאוד יפה, אבל גם מהוונדליזם, ובאמת, He, during the time that he used to go to school, sometimes he used to face uh, demonstrators, like she's demonstrators, that used to uh, bother them and beat them. Except from that, he had, Tehran is beautiful, uh, have a lot of water around it, and uh, basically he was bullied by she is only because he was Jewish. He's going to continue. Oh, chicken. Every Friday night we had chicken. 
And I remember her koshering it because in those days you didn't go to a grocery store and have buy kosher chicken. You had to come home and soak it in a pot and then you dump the water down the drain and you would salt it. First you'd salt it, then you'd soak it and you would kosher the chicken all by yourself. Anyway, uh, we belong to Flatbush Yeshiva. We belong to the Brooklyn Jewish Center. At one point, the Young Israel of Eastern Parkway, the Brooklyn Jewish Center on also on Eastern Parkway, and uh, Crown Heights Yeshiva, and uh, Yeshivot. Now, can you please take out the artifact that you brought? to talk about today? Yes. I've brought this pair of silver candlesticks. Could you tell me about them? Yes. These silver candlesticks uh, belonged to my husband Ivan's family. Um, and I think that they were brought to South Africa by either his mother's family or his father's family when they moved from Lithuania to South Africa and so they're very precious to us because uh, it's a family heirloom really with a lot of history for our family. So how old are they? I have no real idea but I would think they're probably from the 1800s. Wow late 1800 I would think. Um, and I would like to ask if you have a physical artifact that you want to talk about? Uh, yes. Um, in our house in the dining room we have a Russian samovar and that's related to my mother's mother's family coming from Russia and you have a picture of that samovar. Yeah. And Stamped on the samovar is the border guard for each country. So you st it starts in Russia and ends up in France and um, it goes across Europe. Uh, so that's of historical interest. And it was in a prominent place in my mother's parents' house uh, in Brooklyn when I was growing up. And it was from uh, around 1870. When I graduated in 77, I joined the army. I became a medical officer and served as a registered nurse in Sheba Tel Hashomer uh, Medical Center. Okay. Um, who's in this photograph? It's me and my headmaster at how, school. How old were you? I was 20. Um, so the photograph is from a celebration? Yes, from graduation ceremony. Now you can take out either the artifact or the photograph and I'll ask a couple questions on it. Okay, well, the, mm, this is a talit bag that was made in Iraq, in Baghdad, many, many years ago. Probably, Do you know how old it is? I, it, it's probably about close to 80 years old. And there were two made identical to each other. One is slightly bigger than the other. And the bigger one belongs to my, my late father and the smaller one is mine. So why is this special to your family? Because it's unique. It's, it's one of a kind. And it, it's made by hand. And it's, uh, it's, it's unusual. You yeah. see them in other parts of the Middle East as well. Um, so throughout all of this, how did your parents make a living? Um, the Pine View, they owned the Pine View Hotel, mm -hmm. which was founded by my grandfather and expanded by my parents. Yep. And it was a prominent Orthodox hotel in the Catskills uh, during the earlier years. Yeah. Um, so, is there a specific Jewish holiday that you have very fond memories of from your childhood? 
yes, you have a picture of the beautiful, colorful sukkah at Pineview. Yeah. And it was just a very spirited time. You know, it would be reasonably warm and you were in the sukkah and people would be singing and being very happy. Vesamachta v'chagecha. What was your favorite Jewish holiday and what was your memories of it? On the high holidays on uh, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, uh, all of the stores were closed. Everybody, um, nobody went to work. Um, you almost felt like you were in Israel or someplace like that where there was no real non-Jewish world or Gentile world intruding on you. There were probably, I don't know, half a dozen synagogues within walking distance of where, where I lived. This is where I lived until I was 16, including one that was directly across the street from where we lived. Um, the only real um, holiday recollection I have was my mother's parents, Seder at my mother's parents' house, and they died when I was pretty young, but I do have strong recollections of having uh, Seders at my grandparents' house. But my favorite holiday was Lagba Omer, because in the field next to our house, we used, we used to build a big, big uh, fire and then put like a doll of some, of a human or something, and we used to call it Hitler and light it on fire. I think the nicest uh, holiday I remember was Zimkastora. Well, how did you and your family celebrate it? We all went to a place. It was like uh, Oakdale Lodge or something. And uh, all the Jewish people uh, got together. And it was just beautiful. Now I want to ask you to pick a Jewish holiday. And can you describe that holiday and like the memories of that holiday and how you and your family celebrated it? So the holiday that I remember most growing up as we were not a very religious household was Hanukkah, where we would light the Hanukkah and the Hanukkah that I used to light, I actually still have. Passover now is, is on us, right? Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, we'll talk about Passover. Passover was much more difficult than nowadays because we could not buy anything. We had to make all the food for Passover at home before Passover. So all the cooking, all the meat, all the eggs, all the uh, matzah, we baked the matzah at home and we ate it during the eight days of Passover. And we, could not buy anything outside the house and we could not uh, eat anything in, outside the house, not even vegetables. Um, my mom prepared all the traditional Sephardic uh, Pesach foods uh, like bumuelos, frittadas, uh, brown eggs, quajadu. Uh, quajadu mm -hmm. uh, is like a meat casserole uh, with, made with matzah and ground meat. Um, eggplant, stuffed eggplant, stuffed onions, all, all different, all different delicacies, Sephardic delicacies. And one of my aunts was Ashkenazic and the highlight of her year was to bring homemade gefilte fish <laughs> to the, to the seder, which only she ate. She was the only one who ate it. My aunt used to make wonderful kishki six inches long it was delicious she used to make um, gefilte fish she would grind it by hand my mother used to grind her gefilte fish by hand too and um, okay oh we used to play with ducks wall ducks so it used to be a, a big thing that I would pass over to play with walnuts. Um, when you were a teenager, did you have a uh, bat mitzvah or any other celebration like that? When I was a teenager, I had a bat mitzvah. It was 
uh, it was at the synagogue, and uh, we all, uh, Kiddush was a, we used to have fancy pastries for Kiddush. Now, I would like you to pick a Jewish holiday and describe your memories of how you and your family celebrated it when you were a child. In the Soviet Union, Lithuania was in, uh, by the regime of the Soviet Union. We, on the holidays, we went to, to the synagogue. It's the great synagogue in Vilna. And we, we celebrate the uh, Celebrate uh, the holidays of uh, Rosh Hashanah, Seder Pesach, with matzah. Did you have a bar bat mitzvah or any other celebration like that? We we did have bar and bar mitzvahs, but in Iran, because we when we moved from Iraq, we didn't. Uh, have a synagogue to go to at the beginning and we didn't have a rabbi so most of us didn't have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah and uh, and the, most of the Jewish community that came from Iraq since we were on transit kind of we were transiting from Iraq to Israel and we just stopped in Iran so we most of us didn't have a bar mitzvah but we had weddings and things like that but for bar mitzvahs we didn't have when you're a teenager did you have a bar or bat mitzvah uh, or any other celebration like that um when i was a kid i did not have a, a bat mitzvah but when my daughter became of bat mitzvah age, we were in Israel, and I had a bat mitzvah with her on Masada. What traditions from your childhood are you passing down to your children and grandchildren? Well, first of all, is the lighting of the candles. Shabbos candles are very, very important. Then giving tzedakah, that is the other second thing that we are highly important in our family. And uh, third of all, keeping our Jewish uh, heritage and, and remembering that from where we come in, from what parents and grandparents, since my parents went through the concentration camp. So it's very important for me to remember all those points. Uh, what traditions from your childhood are you passing down to your, ch to your children and grandchildren? Examples like food, songs, prayers, and rituals. I need a minute to think. Okay. Well, with, the ch with my children, we used to do the holidays. One of the projects we did make as a family was a sukkah. Uh -huh. oh. and, and, and decorated it with popcorn and greeting cards and all kinds of tchotchkes. When you were my age, did you have a favorite radio or television program or movie that you listened or watched to regularly? And what were yeah. they? Yes, there was a favorite radio program around 7.30 every night when I was mm -hmm. a, a little boy and we would listen, I'd listen to it in bed and mm -hmm. it was the Lone Ranger and his sidekick Tonto <laughs> and the music was very stirring. It was the William Tell Overture. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, great stories about um, life in the Old West. Where did you go to high school, and what was your favorite subject? I went to D. Clinton High School. That's an all-boys high school in the Bronx. It was quite a far walk from where I lived. And um, we had 7,000 students in that school. That's a big school. 
My graduating class was 1,025, oh, wow. which is bigger than most schools altogether. So it was a big school, and it was all boys. And um, my favorite subject uh, was, was history. I enjoyed learning history a lot, and, and of course, and gym was my second favorite subject. Lunch, lunch was a good subject too. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone in your family serve in the military? Yes, they did. My father let me let you read this. Hang on. Uh, I have it right here. The paper? Yes. Um. So it says that your father was in the Army Air Force. He became a uh, officer candidate. He went... He went to be he went he went because he went to the officer candidate school yes and he was first lieutenant with a high grade in the class um he was assigned a job in the usa in the deep south and his job was to train soldiers to get fit physically he was sent to virginia and florida yes. but couldn't stay there because people of the deep south didn't yes. want to Red Jews. Uh, oh, le leather, Red. rent their houses to Jews. Uh, and my parents came back, and your parents came back to New York. Wow. Did anyone in your family serve in the military? If yes, can you tell me more? Did I serve? Or anyone in this family, you? Well, I'm the only one in the family. Well, no, that's not true. I served in the South African military in the South African Navy, and I served in the Israeli military, in the infantry as a physician. And your father, Eitan, served in the army in Israel. How did we meet Safta, and what was it like starting a life together? So I met Safta when we were both living in a small town outside of Vancouver at the inaugural meeting of the establishment of the Jewish community there. There were very few Jews living there. And I met Safta because she also attended the meeting. And I became the founding president of the Jewish community there. And um, our early life was very much involved in raising our children and helping to build the establishment of the Jewish community. How did you meet Saba Pinchas and, and Duncan? Um, yeah, yeah, I met Saba Pinchas in a kibbutz. Because when I come to Israel, the Jewish agency, uh, agency, yes, they mm -hmm. asked me and my brother, because I came to Israel with my, my brother and I, and mm -hmm. they asked us, would you like to go and live in Tel Aviv or in the kibbutz? Mm -hmm. I said, well, what can I do in Tel Aviv without language? I said, no, I want to go to the kibbutz to learn Hebrew first. And then uh, from there, we see. So we went to the kibbutz, and there I met your grandfather, Saba Pinchas. Mm. You know what's a shidduch? No. No, a shidduch is when you, somebody in, tells the family of my grand, my father, Mm -hmm. that there is a nice woman he should meet and he should get married to, not meet, get married to. And uh, they tell the family of the woman that there is a nice man we can introduce her to and get married to. And then these two people see each other once, somewhere, and uh, then they get married. Oh. What kind of work did you do or do you do now? Do I do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I was recently only a retired lawyer mm -hmm. and an artist and someone who fought for Jewish rights and privileges and especially the Soviet Jews. Do you have any hobbies or special interests? Um, I spend most of my spare time uh, making things out of wood. Making furniture, an occasional Mancala board. Oh yes. Oh yes. We I... made a Mancala board a few years ago. 
Yes. Yes. You did. Yes. I would have brought it to show it, but I don't have it. <laughs> it's inside. You should show it. Okay. I'll go get it. Here's, here's a nice small cardboard. It, it says Sarah and Grandpa 2017. Wow, it's five years ago already. There's beads inside of it, but. I see. That's one of the wood projects. What inventions have amazed you most during your lifetime and why? I think the, the, the one that really amazed me was the, the, all the new armament that Israel came out with that helps fight the terrorists and that is I think the most advanced things that they are happening. What are you most thankful for? I'm thankful for the love of my parents. I'm thankful for the linkage to their parents, my grandparents, uh, and uh, not, unfortunately, not having to be in the Holocaust. And I'm grateful, very grateful for my wife, her family, they, she's from Baltimore, by the way, and uh, my children, I have four children, all of whom went to Bicultural Day School, and grandchildren. I have 13 grandchildren. One of them is here, Gabriel, and it's a joy. It's a joy to do activities with them. What advice do you have for future generations like me? Like you? Well, you're lucky, as we were, because you're blessed with two delightful parents who promote an enormous amount of attention to your needs and have provided you with a wonderful home. Uh, you're obviously being well educated and one day you'll go to college and at some stage you're going to make a decision as to what you want to do for the rest of your life. And my advice to you is carefully to consider those elements in life which you consider valuable and you'll ultimately select one you'll study it hopefully it will be the right decision because that decision is going to influence the rest of your life and the quality of your life now to finish this interview what advice do you have for future generations the most important advice is to have peace in the world and um, to have an education that allows you to be a critical thinker and um, a human being when it comes to understanding people and um, good emotional background. So the most important thing I want to express is how important it is to develop your uh, physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Mm -hmm. Thank you for spending time with me and talking with me. Oh, I'm always ready to talk to you. The question is if you are listening. Yeah, I'm listening. Listening, good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Mm -hmm do you have for future generations? Good luck to you guys. You're gonna be old like us one day. <laughs> you live and learn. Wow. Well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, thank you for spending time talking to me about your past. Um, we really appreciate it. My pleasure.